Hey guys, what's going on? Shaw here, and today we're gonna do something a little different, a little more fun. Uh, we're actually gonna be <laughs> making a tier list. I know these are cheesy, but we're gonna make a tier list of the current um, affixes, or at least the shadow lines affixes, because I do have the seasonal affixes from uh, season one and two in here, as well as the current seasonal effects encrypted. And I just wanna go through and kind of talk about each of the affixes with the assumption that hopefully not even assumption, kind of like the hope that in Dragonflight they might do some rework to the affixes because some affixes are still really brutal. I just finished my necrotic video, and while I was doing that, I had this thought of like, I should go through and really dive into each affix and rank them. So that's what we're going to be doing here today. There are five rankings in this. I don't think they're... I don't know. I, I guess I'll leave it how it is. I feel like it's kind of hard to rate them all S through D. And the reason I, I say that is because I think that the range of the affixes, like what makes an S tier to what makes a D tier, I think there's some overlap in between like B and C and A and B that I it would be kind of hard to rate. I don't think you would kind of say that there's an S tier affix um, outside of like very specific like seasonal ones. Like I think Awakened was S tier um, from BFA. So we'll leave it how it is. I'll just go through each one. A few, th a few little small caveats about this video is that I'm going to be looking at the affix as a standalone affix. What makes a good affix is, is there a counterplay across every character? Can every class, every spec do something to have counterplay? Another, another part of that is, is there, is, does the affix punish a certain class of people? Does it punish specifically tanks? Does it punish healers? Does it punish uh, specific classes, toolkits, or is it really bad for melee, really bad for range, annoying, all those kind of things. Essentially, if something is D tier, I think it should be removed, and um, I think it should be removed going into, sh uh, into Dragonflight. If it's like C tier, I would say the affix needs a lot of work, there's maybe some changes you can make to the affix that could improve it to a certain degree, that would move it up a, a tier or so. Uh, B tier is just kind of like average, it's not great. Not all classes have counterplay to it, but it's still like generally a well-received affix. A tier, I think, is an affix that is typically on the easier side, though that is weird because typically when you're looking at affixes, some of them are really easy as a standalone affix, but when you put them in with either like Fortified and Tyrannical, or it's like this week, for example, is Necrotic and Spiteful, like those kind of pairings could make the affix worse or kind of just like a neutral. Sometimes they don't really play into each other. And then I think S tier is like perfect affix, never take it out of the game unless it's a seasonal affix. I don't think anything's going to be an S tier though, if I'm being honest. Um, so with those out of the way, let's just dive in. So we're going to go down the list here. We're going to start with Grievous. My problem with Grievous is that it typically punishes classes that don't have a lot of self-healing. I've ran in the past with a lot of Marksman Hunters. Marksmans don't have as much healing or leech as like BM or as much survivability as ironically survival. So Grievous typically has always been kind of a harsh affix when it comes to that. Most classes have some type of off healing, but Grievous just really doubles down on unavoidable mechanics where it's like on a Tyrannical week or Fortified week, it kind of has a really bad mix. It leaves a bad taste in my mouth when it comes to it. So a big example I can always think of is like Shard of Halkius in Halls of Atonement. You're going you're gonna to take the thrash damage, which is going to put you into Grievous, which means that the healers have to do even more throughput, which takes away from the more dynamic, uh, spend as much time as possible DPSing, because you're up against a timer, compared to just healing throughput. Most high-end key healers understand that healing is more of like a, a, a secondary characteristic of their class, and their primary characteristic is to... Uh, come as a buff as well as put out as much damage as possible. That's why you're seeing these Resto Shamans and these these Priests and these Druids do like 6 to 7k DPS overall in keys now. So I think Grievous is honestly going to, starting off strong, is actually going to be in D tier. I don't think it rewards players. It makes healers feel bad about having to do their job. <laughs> um, some people are going to disagree with me on this, that Grievous adds a fun healing element to keys, but they have changed Grievous over, over time. Grievous used to be... Uh, some classes struggled, like Resto Druids, like the initial application of certain HOTs wouldn't count as removing stacks, um, which always felt really bad. Like Resto Druids had a horrible time in keys compared to something like a Priest or a Shaman, which had more direct healing. But not talking about the pre-buff pre or pre-nerf Grievous, I think as it stands now, I think it should be removed going into um, 
Dragonflight. Or at least I would like to see it removed. It's not going to, of course. Well, we'll see. Feel free to disagree with me on any of these. Um, it would be kind of cool to have some discourse about some of the effects because I think some of the my decisions in here is going to surprise you. So next we have Bursting. Bursting is an affix that there's typically counterplay now that's dispellable. It highlights some really cool things like Revival from Miss Weaver Monks, Mass Spell, of course, from Priests, things like Diffuse Magic, and then, of course, you have, like, classes that have immunities. I think classes that don't have immunities get pretty scared on this week, and I think that this affix punishes the lower bracket. Because sometimes when you'll have, like, really high DPS and low keys, you blast through trash, and it's really hard to do this, like, control, where it's, like, we need to stop damage here because we're at four stacks and we don't want to roll it into five and then into six because then we're going to die. So I like the concept of the affix when it comes to higher keys. I think it's pretty bad in lower keys and it punishes a lot of groups, but I think I would probably put this in the B tier. Uh, it's always a, a fix that I think people look forward to because it's objectively easier, especially in higher end content. The damage doesn't scale too out of control, but in higher keys, it's easier to stop damage because when a mob is at 2% health, in a higher key, that's still like 30k damage. That's still 50k damage where it won't, it's not going to rot out over two seconds or three seconds. In lower keys, that like 2% health is typically going to be like 5k, which a dot, like a couple of dot ticks will kill it. I think B tier for bursting. All right, bolstering. Now, I think some of you guys will, <laughs> a lot of you guys probably hate this fix, but it's seen some really cool changes over the course of Shadowlands. They have made it now a uh, temporary buff so it used to last forever that shit was horrible it also used to bolster bosses which was also horrible also there was like some really weird interaction with like smaller minor mobs or npcs bolstering so it's like you would pull in some like stuff that has like a tenth of the health and it would just like mega bolster some mobs so it was really difficult to do some keys they've changed all that bolstering no longer affects affects bosses so bolstering doesn't slow down the key as much and what it really does is it highlights the concept of control. Single targeting and doing priority damage to one specific target in a certain pole or a certain dungeon is universally going to be better on bolstering weeks, or it's going to be emphasized on bolstering weeks because you don't want to, again, going back to Halls of Atonement example, you don't want to pull a shard, pull a bunch of groundskeepers, kill the groundskeepers first. The shard is now doing 80% increased damage or whatever it might be. Have 80% increased health, so that means it's not going to die, uh, and you're going to wipe to the next thrash. So obviously, like, bolstering in conjunction with, like, Fortified, this is going to go with Raging as well, but in conjunction with, like, Fortified, it's a little punishing, but I would actually rate this an A-tier fix, because I think, by itself, the the way that you would handle a certain pull is going to change slightly to the point where you want to fixate certain mobs over others, but so it doesn't get out of control. There's also... The biggest argument before was like bolstering, like slow down the dungeon where you can't chain pull or you can't pull into bosses. You can now pull into bosses, which is great. And because it's a temporary buff, sometimes you can still chain or you have to be very smart about how you chain. So I like this affix a lot. I hope, but I don't, yeah, there's nothing wrong with it, in my opinion. This was going to be the hot take, I think. This and Necrotic, I think where I would rate Necrotic will surprise some of you. All right, so next we have Raging. It's similar to Bolstering, but it's not because the only way to counterplay it, well, obviously like there's kiting and CCs and stuff, but it's like bringing a Soothe to your group. What classes have Soothe? Rogue on a 20 seconds cooldown, Hunters on a whatever second cooldown. But the thing about Hunters, you can only purge one enraging effect. So if there's other rage mobs in a dungeon, Theater of Pain is a great example, like the Bloodhorn at the very start of the dungeon. If that's enraged and it gets enraged from the affix, you can only soothe one of them. And then you have Druid, of course. I main Druid, so I don't get bothered too much about Raging, but I also play other tanks. And when I go to my Paladin or my Monk or my Blood Decay or my Vengeance Demon Hunter, I definitely feel this pain, especially in conjunction with like the Fortified Effects. Fortified Raging should never exist. That's like my, that's my biggest thing. I wouldn't say you should remove Raging from the game. I don't think it's D tier. I would probably put this in C tier. And here is what I would think about this effects a lot. I think if you made it so that the raging buff or like when they hit 30%, it's for a short period of time, six seconds, 10 seconds. Basically it would change the dynamic of how they would work instead of like running and kiting and praying that the things die or saving CDs for the end of pull, which always feels bad. You can still soothe, of course, if you have a soothe. So it would pull back on the restrictions of having a soothe in your group. But what it would do is like, okay, we know that when these mobs hit 30%, 
we have to survive for six seconds. We have to survive for 10 seconds. So CCs, defensives, but then that buff will fade. Now, in its current iteration, if you sue the target and it stays alive long enough, it'll re-enrage after like 20 or 30 seconds. That can stay, or it can like, it can, it, it has like periods where it enrages. So sub 30% for like six seconds, every 20 seconds, it'll do double damage. I think that would be a much cooler idea than having it in its current iteration where it gets enraged, it does so much more damage once it's sub 30, uh, and even if you sue that it goes back on it anyways, why not make it a shorter buff or for the mob? I think that would make it a little bit better. I think that would put it into B tier, but I think without big changes, I would lean this towards D tier, but I don't think, I think there's like recovering this effect. Um, next we have Tormented. I'm actually gonna move seasonal affixes to the end of the list because we're gonna talk about those last because they're just different. All right, Necrotic. This one's actually gonna surprise a lot of you as well. Necrotic in pre-made groups is actually a very interesting, dynamic, conscious effort to keep your tank alive. Some classes handle it better than others, either like classes with higher dodge, like bears and, and monks. Some classes have a better toolkit. So I think every class has a good toolkit for this, except maybe DH, but they have Infernal Strike. And then maybe Prot Warrior, I would argue. Like, I'm not sure because I don't play Prot Warrior a lot, but when I played back in BFA on my Prot Warrior, it was just... Necrotic was never fun. Necrotic is a really unique interaction with your group because the tank has to have a toolkit or has to make, um, you know, adaptive choices to change their toolkit to help counter mobs getting to them. They have to be able to kite, which makes a 15 feel like you're doing a 25 because in 25s you kind of do the same thing. It's like, oh shit, I'm getting hit. I need to step away from these mobs for a bit. I need people to keep them away from me. Also, it really highlights the group's um, kind of awareness of your tanks health and and stacks so it's like okay my tanks at 30 stacks i should probably drop a binding shot here maybe i should lay sweep i'll drop a ring of peace i'll thunderstorm mobs away I'll, I'll whatever it might be i'll fear mobs here temporarily the healer paying attention to like okay the tanks at 40 stacks 50 stacks i can't heal him i need to focus on something else i need to focus on cc's i need to you know help the tank kite in some way I think the group elements of that is really, really engaging. I think it's dynamic. I think it's really enjoyable. Now, of course, you can always make the argument that maybe the duration's too long still. It's been nerfed several times over Shadowlands and from BF and since from like BFA. Um, it lasts for like six, five to six seconds. Uh, the stacks don't stack up as quickly, and a lot of bosses don't hit you fast enough to actually make the stacks accumulate where the, you can't drop them. But I, I don't know. I'm not sure. Maybe they should just remove the damage element from Necrotic. It does have a, have a damage effect. I think that would make it a little bit more a little bit more suitable for classes like warrior where you basically like you're shield blocking like and you're blocking a lot of attacks anyways but i would actually rate this an a tier effects by itself standalone not counting like this week it's paired with spiteful i think it's also paired with it's been paired with like sanguine in the past um i don't know what other effects it's been paired with maybe inspiring i don't remember as a standalone effects i think it's great i think it challenges the tank it challenges your group uh, but it's an effect you can you can semi work around. I think if you're talking about like pushing highest highest end keys, of course it's not a great effect for that. There's obviously like bursting volcanic. Um, there's also bursting storming. Much better combo of affixes. But for an effect by itself, I think it's great. Feel free to disagree with me because I know there's going to be some very heavy opinions about some of these affixes. Um, <clears throat> explosive is next. I would actually put this, so I'm gonna put this in C tier. And the reason, I think it's a B tier affix for sure, that I have one big gripe with this affix. And so the change from BFA to Shadowlands was the explosive orbs used to have like a pretty good amount of health, like where a DPS would actually have to turn and hit it with an actual spell. I'm doing this because outlaw rogues were just the thing back then. Uh, You'd have to actually turn and hit the mobs. You'd have to hit, hit, turn and hit the explosives. The change that they made going into Shadowlands is that the, those mobs have like next to no health. An auto attack pretty much will kill them. Um, a minor like filler spell from a tank or a healer will typically kill them. So like priest, for example, shadow or pain. I should specify holy priests. The problem I have this with the fix is that the shift from being a, being a DPS affix to a tank slash healer fix because of the health pool has probably made it worse than it has been. I think it was bad before, but now, because of the, okay, <laughs> where I'm going with this is that 
I don't mind doing explosives. I like doing it. I enjoy doing it. My big problem that I have with this effect is that when you pair it with the fact that I have to hold threat and maintain aggro on mobs, it makes it very difficult because I have to spend those globals, you know, targeting the targeting the explosive orbs and then using an ability on them like Moonfire or Mangle or whatever it might be. So it's very difficult to hold aggro on mobs while I'm doing this minigame because DPS don't want to do it because it's a waste of their damage because the explosives have no health and the healers don't want to do it because they're trying to keep the group alive. I do think that healers should mostly do it. It's their mini game. Tanks should help in though and tanks are like the second in line. It, it, the priority is like healer and then tank and then DPS are way down here. DPS only help out when it's like that weird moment where six explosive or orbs spawn all at the same time. Yeah, okay, DPS need to help out for a second. But I think the effects, if they made that change, if they fixed threat, this would be a B tier fix. But since they haven't fixed threat yet, and they probably never will, because Blizzard hates tanks for some reason, it's going to stay as a C tier fix. All right, the other fix that's going on this week is Spiteful. I'm going to put Spiteful in C tier as well. And the reason it's in C tier is I think it's way too punishing to melee. It's way too punishing to melee healers and melee DPS. It's not fun having to run out. Like, I every every week that Spiteful rolls around, all the melee that I play with either don't want to play or they complain the whole time, which I get it. It's not fun to have to run out when when one mob dies and it turns to target to you. In hierarchies, like 20s plus, I like we've been running like 23s, 24s, these dudes one shot you. Like, if you don't have high verse or don't pop a defensive, a Spiteful spawns and hits you, you're pretty much dead. It's also not fun to have to like run out of melee as a melee and just stand there waiting for this thing to despawn while your range like slow it and try to kill it range it doesn't affect them at all right like they're standing 30 yards back they're throwing out aoe stuns aoe abilities um they're cleaving it down they're getting funnel they're getting whatever they want it's a great fix for that i think it really highlights the strength of some classes like ellie shaman and frost mage that even when the pull gets kind of down towards the end and there's less targets to hit there's still more targets to hit because you're still cleaving onto these mobs i think a big thing that they can do is they can make it prioritize range more often than melee or they need to just nerf the damage they do. Like, the big thing is, it should be a thing of like, okay, I have one spiteful out, I need to be careful. I have, I have two, I should pop a defensive three, okay, now I need to run. But when there's only one fixating you, and you have to just go and AFK by your range for like 8 seconds, 10 seconds, that's not fun for any melee. So I'm not sure, maybe they should make the movement speed a little bit slower, or the attack speed slower. I'm not sure what they can do, but they need to fix the spiteful mob interaction with the players. If they did, this would easily be a B and A or A tier of fix. I just think there's too many issues with kind of isolating the, the melee players, as well as like, it's very punishing if you mess this up. But again, range don't care. Range do not give a fuck about this effect. Next, we have big inspiring. This always reminds me of like the teaming like picture. Um, I think inspiring is actually an A tier of fix. And here's why. It, it goes kind of in the same, it's the kind of same thought process as... Uh, necrotic or bolstering there is counterplay almost every class brings some type of counterplay to this affix which that affix would essentially be do you have some type of cc okay cool leave it out or bring that priority damage because that mob needs to die because it's in a pack with all these casters and the casters need to be kicked but we can't because there's an inspired mob in there so we need to kill it when this aff affix was first announced i was like oh shit they're bringing back beguiling and <laughs> I was not excited for it, but Blizzard did a really good job at limiting the amount of mobs in a dungeon that are inspired, and more often than not, the inspired mobs are also the mobs that you want to kick. So another example of this, again, going back to Halls of Atonement, the Houndsmasters, you typically want to interrupt them on their Loyal Beast casts and their Rapid Fires. With them being inspired, which means you can still do that, the only thing you have to worry about is like your tank kiting Gargans, but again, that mob is like a caster slash like i mean it's a marksman so it's gonna just kind of shoot and it's not gonna follow your tank so you can easily kite the gargans out to the point where you can slow them and then you can go back into melee as like a tank player as an example there are some dungeons i will admit that it's kind of rough i would say like sanguine there's a handful of pulls that are like really rough with inspiring in it but for the most part it's not that bad of an effect as long as blizzard is very like conscious of like what mobs they're putting it on and how punishing that's going to be. So I would say it's like low A, maybe high B. I just definitely scrolled up there. Boop. Um, so actually, you know, I, I changed my mind. I'm going to put it as a B tier fix. I think in some dungeons, it really depends on what mobs are, are tuned. 
and if you have like a good priority damage, but for the most part, it's actually a pretty good effects. Ooh, next we have Storming. I don't like Storming. They spawn too frequently, they're really punishing for DPS players, they can put you in a pretty bad position, and they spawn just like way too frequently. I think I said that twice, but... There's no counterplay. Like, there is, like, some classes with, like, Death's Advance, right? Or, like... I mean, that's pretty much it, I think. Like, no one else can really soak them and not get punished. It could put your tank out of line. It can knock you up in a weird direction where, like, a frontal could turn. It could be very, very punishing on Tyrannical Weeks on boss fights if you get hit. Uh, and you get kind of launched into, like, an AoE space. Or you get stuck in... Um, I'm thinking of like, there's a time on uh, Davos, the last boss of Spires, where my DPS got knocked up and the charged spear went off at them and they died because of it. Um, it's just, it's like obnoxious and it's obnoxious for like the wrong reasons. And it's obnoxious for melee more, more than it is for range players. So I think similar to like Spiteful, I don't think, actually, you know what? Fuck this. Uh, I hate storming. I think they should remove it from the game. They should replace it with an, an actually engaging mechanic. The only fix that I can see is make them spawn less and make them not do damage. The fact that they do damage on top of putting you in a position where you can get one shot is ridiculous. All right, now we have Quaking. Quaking, uh, I used to actually play range in keys, so I'm actually pretty familiar with how Quaking interacts with like being a caster. I used to actually push as an Ellie Shaman, believe it or not. Hence why you get the name uh, Farseer. Uh, just haven't dropped it yet. So Quaking is a, a unique effect because it, it's supposed to punish range. But it sometimes feels like it punishes melee more because the melee limitation uh, or the space that you have in melee is a lot tighter than you do in range. And I know you'll make the argument uh, that it, it interrupts casting, but give me a second. I'll get there. So in a lot of comps right now, you have the tank who has to be in melee. You typically have a healer. Um, if you if you see like a paladin, a mistweaver, or even a resto druid, and actually right now, holy priests jump into melee because they need to get as much damage with their boon of the boon of the ascended window that you have this awkward situation where you have tank two-thirds of the healer player base and like you have obviously like any melee class which more often than not you're seeing rogue serve hunters havoc dhs and warriors right now in keys you're obviously seeing the other ones as well but for the most part you're seeing these melee classes even if you just bring one if not two you have four melee which really crowds the space it's it's obnoxious it forces people to move out to not take damage, which is obviously the smarter play. But when you have that many melee and there's like frontals and there's different like cone type mechanics and different AoEs you need to avoid, it makes the affix very, very punishing for melee. And that's what I don't like about it. Now, of course, coming back to casters, it's of course extremely obnoxious to have to interrupt your casting or stop your casting, if not get silenced. I think that's a good affix that punishes range compared to a lot of these other affixes like Storming and Spiteful that punish melee. But I think it's more punishing for the for the melee player base than it is for the range because range, more often than not, you have ways to reapply dots. You have typically most of your casts are going to be less than two seconds. So the ideal, ideally, you would just stop, finish your cast, fill with one global that's a like an like a insta cast spell. And then you would just go back into your rotation. And typically, a smart DPS player who's aware of the quaking timings, will it's not really going to affect them as much. They've made some changes over the course of the last couple expansions uh, to this affix that have improved it. Like, it doesn't it doesn't do damage now. Where it used to for it, you you used to take damage no matter what. Every time quaking went off, you took damage. They now made it where like if you're not in anyone else's circle, you don't take damage from it. So they've made good changes to it. I would say it's maybe like high c low b tier i think quaking is like a fine affix i wish they would make it so it doesn't trigger out of combat because when you're out of combat and like let's just say you had someone die and they're trying to get you know a food buff or something like that and then a dps like walks over them and interrupts it like that's still obnoxious but for the most part they've made good changes to it i just would like to see maybe um they could easily improve it by making it not trigger out of combat or like pause the timer um or something they should make the timer more consistent honestly like it's now, it's on a 20 second inter interval up to 60 seconds. So you could go up to a full minute without seeing it, or you can go every 20 seconds, which is a little bit of an RNG factor. Okay, we're almost done. This is going to be a long video. All right, Sanguine. I think Sanguine is going to fall into the like B slash A tier. What I, what I like about Sanguine now is that 
Actually, we're going to put in B tier because I don't think a lot of classes have counterplay to it and it's really on your tank. So it kind of focuses in on can your tank move mobs properly? And then there's those really annoying range players who is like, I know what to do. And they like knock things into all directions, like with Shining Fours or Thunderstorm or Typhoon. And it's like, you just kind of made the situation worse. But besides that, I think tanks have to kind of think about positioning the mob in a smart way. Uh, you also have to be aware of mobs that can't be CC'd or slowed. You also have to think of about mobs that have like cast sequences so again going back into halls of atonement the shards of halkius you don't want to kill groundskeepers underneath them when they're thrashing right because then you can't move the boss or that you can't that you can't move the mini boss uh and he's just going to heal up to full what i like about this effects is that there is counterplay though if your tank is smart um as well as there is, are some utility factors that some classes can bring like knockbacks this is an affix that either doesn't exist because you're really good at handling it or it's an a key, uh, an affix that's going to actually nuke your key i think in the terms of that by itself actually you know i'm gonna move it up to a tier because i think it's like pretty good oh no i'm torn maybe b tier high b tier we'll do high b tier for it uh because not all classes can do it and it's it's an affix that you have to kind of you pull the same, but you have to like be mindful in every pull. And you just have to kind of tackle the dungeon at like a different pace than you normally would. Because again, you could play perfectly and nothing gets screwed up and nothing heals and it's really great. Or everything gets goes down the shitter and then you fail the key by like five minutes. Uh, lastly, we have Volcanic. Volcanic is just going to go into A tier. Um, it doesn't punish any player base. The, the counterplay is move. Sometimes you get lucky and they don't spawn underneath you. They prioritize range players, which is always nice. The damage for it is a little low. If they remove the damage component, this would be easily the best affix on the board. But if you just don't get hit, you don't get hit and you don't take damage and it's great. Is it interactive at all with the dungeon and how you would play? No, but <laughs> it's um, it's still an enjoyable affix because like in conjunction with, like if you compare this to storming, right? Storming is just a worse, is a moving volcanic which is just horrible. Uh, volcanic, it, it is punishing if you get hit by it. You take damage, you get knocked up. It interrupts your like momentum that you have, whether it's your rotation or your cast sequence or your setup. But for the most part, it's like a mechanic that you have to be you have to be aware of, but like a good player kind of always is watching their feet and knowing where to stand and where not to. So it's kind of like, it's, it's a little bit fun. All right, so we are 30 minutes in-ish. Uh, let's talk about these seasonal fixes. So seasonal affixes, it's really hard to ha hard to compare them to general affixes because seasonal affixes kind of determine the pace of the season. Is it going to be fun? Is it not going to be fun? You have this affix every week you have to deal with. Sometimes they have the AV pattern. And then when you compare a seasonal affix to Awakened, like holy shit, you're never going to get close to Awakened. Though I do think that one of these three affixes got very close to it, um, which I'll talk about in a bit. So Prideful... It was a it was a it was a percentage mob count based affix, which meant that every time you hit twenty percent mob count, it would spawn. It would spawn the the manifestation of pride. It would just do ramping ticking damage up to like twenty stacks or whatever. There was a small positional aspect to it where you had to certain players would get to, like have a debuff on them that would pro shoot out projectiles in a couple di different directions. I think it was cardinal directions, and then you had to dodge it if not it like stunned you. The reward for doing this was a like what 100 percent damage boost healing boost and mana and health regeneration for like a minute like actually cracked so this was good in the range from like 10 to 20 keys and after that the affix felt really bad so i think because of that aspect it would be b tier because what would happen is like in a 15 you would be going through you'd be using your cds the prideful would spawn you would kind of take your time you would kill that mob cds would be back up and you'd be like let's go make a motherfucking giant ass pull you have Incarnop, you got like your wings, you have like your combustions, you have like all these different things, and you're just ready to go. And you can do some crazy shit. Really fun. In higher keys, it got to the point where you needed to use cooldowns on the Prideful mob to be able to kill it <laughs> so you can um, survive to, you know, keep going in the key. And that felt bad because then you didn't have CDs for the damage amp. So it was just this kind of like really kind of cluttered mess actually another thing about this too it i hate percentage based affixes i'm gonna put this in seed here because when you have these kind of things pugs oh my god like having someone accidentally body pull a patrol or pull an extra mob that you didn't want or just like 
now imagine this in gambit holy shit like a murloc running off and then coming back with like 10 more murlocs and you're like well we're fucked that would be funny prideful not a great fix when it comes to that reaping i see what they were trying to do here they were trying to have like this kiss curse element where it's like you have to kill this thing but it gives you a huge buff and including like reaping which is a bfa fx seasonal fix which is a lot a lot of P players loved reaping but reaping wasn't as punishing uh, plus, there was, like, uncapped AoE, and basically you only ran with three outlaw rogues ever, so that was really easy. Uh, so they tried to, like, mix the two together. So I think in that, I just don't like percentage-based uh, affixes. They're just, they're not fun. They're not fun for the tank, mostly. But they're not enjoyable because if the route gets fucked up. So I'm going to put this, like, C tier, maybe high C tier. Um, yeah. All right, Tormented. Low C tier, for sure. Um... Tormented, for those who didn't play or don't remember. There was four mini-boss mobs. They all had different mechanics. It was similar to Awakened. If you played Awakened, they were basically like... They had two or three mechanics you had to deal with. Um, a couple of tank busters, some frontals, dodge, like, watch your feet. Um, kind of rotting fire damage. Stuff like that. And when you killed them, you got a power. Powers were based on your role. You had three choices of powers. More often than not, you chose the same four powers the whole time. There was a few instances where, like, as a tank, I would choose, like, stone the Stone Ward or Stone Barrier versus, like, the, the Mirror, which reduced magical damage taken, but that was only on Tyrannical Weeks in, like, Halls of Atonement. Um, I can't remember any other key that I did that in, but... Originally, when we tested this on the PTR, it was really fun because the powers were fucking nuts. Uh, they were really... They were just really fun. I think if Blizzard did some type of, like, rotating... I'm not sure, because, like, when I think back to, like, a rotating affix, I think of Beguiling, and it's just, like, ugh. Beguiling was that one season where there was one push week on the calendar, and any other week you didn't do keys. You would just, like, fuck right off. You'd get your, like, one key done for your little Boralus chest. Damn it, Bellular. Stop sending me notifications. All in all, just, like, a really boring effects. I didn't push in season two, and I didn't push, so I didn't make content. I didn't... I just kind of, like, lost the enjoyment I had for the game and for keys. So I really just like rated, I did my weekly keys each week, I worked on some alts, and then that, that that's really the, all I did. So I think this this affix killed the fun for Mythic Plus for me. I would say it's D tier, but like it wasn't bad, it was just boring. Like it was really, really boring. And until you got up to like 23s or higher, like you didn't really have to like, you could just kill all four mobs, take your powers, and just like DPS your way through keys. Not fun. Not fun at all. Okay, lastly, let's talk about my favorite affix ever. Not really. I think Awaken was better, but this probably comes, this might come to a surprise to some of you, but maybe not some of you because I've, I talk very highly of this affix in some of my videos. Outside of Vi being shit, I think this affix is insane. It's so fun. Cooldown reduction makes the idea of Mythic Plus much faster. I know there's a handful of classes that don't. I know there's like Boomkins out there who hate killing Ur because it doesn't really do anything for them. Ur gives you, so, okay, backing up for any of you who for some reason aren't playing this season and you some, for some reason watch my content. There's a handful of different packs and dungeons um, that have additional mobs in them. Those mobs are just called relics. You have Ur Relic, Wo Relic, and Vi Relic. If you you get to pick which of the three relics you want to kill, let's just say you want to kill Ur, you kill that relic, it spawns a mini boss. You kill that mini boss, that mini boss gives you a power, and then that power lasts for a certain a set duration. You have the Ur Relic. Ur gives you cooldown reduction, mana regen, health regen. Amazing. Wo gives you a a group 15% damage reduction. It gives you 150% movement speed, which is fun as fuck. If I can kill Woe in every situation, I would. And it gives you stealth out of combat. Fucking nuts. Then you have Vi. Vi sucks. Vi gives you haste. No one likes haste. And also, there's like a small damage component. So here's what I was going to say. I think they could buff Vi. I think they should give... What it should give, it should give, like, recovery on resources. I think it should give, like... It should give you, like... Astral Power, Energy, Maelstrom, um, maybe it should generate, like, rune, rune Recoveration Speed, on top of giving, obviously, like, you have the 15% Haste plus Damage Component. Also, the Damage Component, I think they should increase a little bit. I think it's underwhelming right now. I think if they upped it a little bit, you would see more of a use, but it's way more efficient to have, like, the cooldown reduction for 10 seconds than it is to have, like, the 15 second, or the, the 45 second Haste buff. I think it would be really cool for, like, I think some classes would like Vi more, or some comps, or some class, or some, like, group comps would enjoy it more if, like, our Frost DK and our Boomkin were now 
able to dump more star surges, hit star starfall more often, uh, have more runes to kind of just pump. I think that would be fun. Uh, I'm not saying that's what they should do. I think the affix is fine as it is. What this affix does, though, is it removes the uh, requirement for like a rogue or rogue stealth. Well, you can use it in certain like other situations, but those are a little more niche. But you can skip some pretty absurd trash, which is amazing. Like D other side, I just talked about this recently, but there's groups that literally just kill the first pack. They kill Woe, and they just they leave. They just go to Ardenwald or they go to Hakkar. Like they just they skirt right to wherever they want to be in the dungeon. And I think when you have a d dungeon designed in a linear fashion like this, having the Woe buff is so so good for the for like. The route theory crafting and the and like the different strategies you might have in a dungeon amazing the 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 cooldown reduction for most classes is just really fun it doesn't just affect the cooldowns but it ref it affects everything so it affects like minor cds like bark skin for example for bears but even things like thrash or keg smash or um like shield slam all of these abilities now have like a reduced cooldown essentially because the recovery rate is ramped up by 200 percent so like you can pretty much thrash every global you can keg smash every other global like you can just kind of like pump really big damage no matter what class you're playing outside of the few exceptions like boomkin so all in all great affix it's fun um every time like i've been obviously playing the last nine weeks i've been putting out content and stuff there's not a time where i don't enjoy getting ur like it's just it's fun where the tormented this was boring after one week let alone the, the a full like nine month season so big fan of big fan of the relics so yeah that's my um a fix i know there's there's some probably standouts in here like i don't think a lot of people would rate storming this low and i don't think people would rate necrotic and bolstering this high but these are fixes that i think are dynamic they have counterplay and by themselves as standalone are fairly enjoyable I think there's obviously some effects that are a little bit worse and could need some improvement. That's kind of where the C tier comes in, where I think C tier means that um, they, it, it can be improved to be a B or A tier. D, I don't think there's any recovering. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I would love to have some discourse about this or don't. Uh, it's up to you. But I kind of like thinking about these things, especially when it comes to Dragonflight and kind of thinking about how they're going to design Mythic Plus, because we're obviously seeing a change with the rotating dungeons. We're going to have to see how Season 4 works out for Shadowlands, but I'm getting pretty excited, so hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, if you liked it, let me know so I can do more like this. All right, hope you guys are staying happy, healthy, and I will catch you all in the next one. Take care.